so we are down here at Noble Wolf Barbers in Las Vegas with Roxy and she's going to tell us a little bit about her story as a barber and whatever else is in the past. So yeah, just give us a little rundown about your story and how you started. Um, I first got into the industry maybe 11, 12 years ago. I moved to LA uh, to become a famous actress and screenwriter. And six months in, I ran out of money and had to work. Um, I worked at a place on Melrose where bands played and I got offered a second job at Floyd's Barbershop in LA and I just took it because I needed more money and uh, and being in there I felt like it was just such a cool vibe. I'd never been in a barbershop before. I figured I'll just open a barbershop, not cut hair, just open a barbershop and when I moved back to Vegas a year later I needed a career, I needed something, and there was no barber school at the time. So I went to cosmetology school, and um, went to cosmetology school, figured I would just do women's hair. I was so afraid of men's hair cutting, and my first salon assisting, all they did was give me the men clients. I, I have no idea why. And uh, yeah, and from there I ended up at Supercuts, which was the best thing I could have done. Spoiler alert, you hear really bad haircuts there because everyone's like fresh out of school. So I butchered a ton of hair, but I, I needed to, you know, to get my footing. And I mean, bounced around a lot and just maybe three years ago, finally got my barber license. Been doing men's hair the whole time, but now I'm licensed to use a straight razor. And I opened my shop. It must have been two years later. So, so in terms of start in the industry and like moving from cosmetology into barbering as a female did you come across any any hurdles or was it quite easy i mean um well i had already been doing men's hair so i mean i was already known for doing men's hair so that i think my transition might have been a little easier um going to school i really only had to learn a straight razor at that point the only thing i would say is that um I think I get questioned more than a guy would. You know, when I say I'm a barber, it's like a barber, a stylist. I'm like, well, I said barber, so um, I say I'm opening a barber shop, and everyone assumes it's a salon. That was probably the hardest thing. Most people just assuming that I was really just a stylist, but um, yeah, the shop's been around for a year, and uh, most of the barbers in here actually are dual licensed, have both cosmetology and barber licenses, and um, yeah, I think. I've earned some respect. <laughs> uh, and if you had any advice for someone coming into the industry now, 2018, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of people want to fast track these days to glory, what, what would your general advice to be someone who's coming into it now? Um, I, I worked really hard to get to where I am. It definitely didn't come easy. There was a lot of times where I struggled, didn't know how I was gonna get my next meal. It was hard. Um, so it, it's it's sometimes a little harder to see someone just come in and and get the success right off the bat. But I think the one thing that I see from that is sometimes barbers think they don't need to continue learning, um, and you're you're not 100%. I don't think after you know a couple months of being on the floor, and if you stop the learning and growing process, um, I think that's unfortunate. You know what I mean? Um, the industry is so different now, and men want to look good, whereas before, I, I don't know, in Vegas, guys didn't care. They didn't care, so it's, there's this whole clientele that's out there and ready, and so why not be the best for them? And that would be my advice, to always keep learning, always keep growing, because you're never going to know everything. Yeah, at the shop, I host classes here, and I still learn stuff. You know, and after 10 years in the industry, I'm still learning, and I'm, and I think that's important. If, the, if you could pinpoint what you really love about being a barber and why you'll continue to do it, what would it be? I, I feel like there's so many reasons, there's so many things to love about this industry. Um, if you're creative, um, if you like people, even if you don't like people, I mean, people become family after a while and so it's a good way to socialize if you're not necessarily a social person. I think what keeps me in it though is, um, is that <laughs> what keeps me in it is that um, I think that the industry is kind of like this alive thing and that it's always changing. Um, 
once you get tired of doing one thing, there's so many other things that you can do and still stay in the industry. I cut hair for a while. I opened a barbershop. I'd love to start a product line. Um, I'd love to teach a little bit more. And there's just so many things to keep you interested and, um, if you want to stay in it and hurt your wrist or something like that. You can still be a part of it, distributor. Um, it's just amazing. I love that. That's probably my. That's probably the one thing that keeps me into it, is that I can switch it up kind of whenever I want and still be in it. You know.